Hi, Alan. Um, yeah. Did you make me host? Working on it. I don't see your name's not popping up at the moment. There it is. <clears throat> Just refreshed. <clears throat> Co host. Should be good to go. Okay. We'll see a Massey's joining. <clears throat> <clears throat> Lindsay, oh, there's a bunch of people. But no people from the committee. <laughs> I'll be right back. I'll use this one. Whatever you want to do. Give it another minute and a half. I don't know Excuse me. Okay. All right, Sarah's. Nobody gets the links. Is that what's going on? <clears throat> it's up on the website. So. Mm -hmm. Be right back. Okay. Almost ready to start. All right, I think we're getting close. People on the committee can at least turn on their video. That's Bennett. Okay, I think we're all here. Um, Shoshana is not going to be able to make it. So, Julian, you're flashing. Oh, <laughs> we lost Julian, but we guys, he's, he's still here. So, um, we have a couple people attending who chose not to be uh, promoted Catherine Dickey, Lindsay Robinson. And then um, we also have one other person, if I can find her name, Lucia, Lucia. Ma Lucia yeah. Massey. So those three are um, students in my environmental education class, and they may have um, a question at some point later about the tree inventory and how to be helpful on that. Um, and I said they could have extra credit for attending a public meeting. Um, where, where trees are the focus. So um, if you all, Lindsay, Catherine, or Lucia have any 
comments or anything, just let Henry know at whatever point he prompts um, members of the public to speak. You can speak up or you can raise your hand. Um, I'm gonna, I don't have my folder with me. I'm just gonna go run and get it and then we'll officially start. Okay. All right. Um, Bennett, you're taking minutes. Thank you. Yeah. And Sarah, can you, um, if I make you host, can you keep an eye on attendees and add anybody in? Yes. Okay. So, if I can find you here. Uh, maybe Alan, you'll have to do that. Promote Sarah to host. Okay. And then I'll grab my agenda. I'm not going to um, share the agenda and the minutes because that was more complicated than it was worth, it seemed. All right. So, uh, welcome, everybody. Um, First thing, do we approve the April minutes? All in favor? Yeah. I wasn't there, so I won't vote. Okay, Julian, can you hear us? If you unmute, we can hear you maybe, maybe you can't hear us. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, you okay, great. My you approve the minutes. Has some sort of issue. Yes, I approve the minutes. I'm okay. going to try to join on a different device here. Okay, either way, or you can. We can hear you. That's good. Okay. Um, okay. Um, that's good. Um, announcements and public comments. Any of the three students or anybody else on want to make a comment? Talk about yourself or your wonderful teacher or anything else. Catherine, go ahead. Okay, hi, um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so we're working on um, a tree project for the Amherst Farmer's Market this Saturday. And our group, um, Lucia is also in my group, and our focus is on past, present, and future. And so one of the tools that we were using when we were creating our project was the Amherst Tree Database. But then I remember we talked about in class how it's like a little bit over 10 years old. And so part of our project, we are thinking about um, inviting people at the farmer's market to let us know what trees were on the database, but were no longer or have been cut down since then. And then kind of creating an updated inventory. So um, we were just wondering what the best way to collect that data would be, whether it to be an email or if we just start like a Google form and a spreadsheet. And then I was also wondering about the um, Amherst tree map. And I know there's a GIS layer, but I wasn't sure if you also had um, like an Excel table or a data set that's also available to the public. And just if you had any ideas on like community science approaches to updating the database. I can try to answer that. I'm Alan Snow, I'm the um, tree warden with the town. Welcome to the Shade Tree meeting. Um, thanks for all your work you're doing on, um, you know, making, helping to make people aware. <laughs> it's very important. Um, so our database, the tree inventory um, is downloadable. You know, you can download the entire uh, inventory as an Excel spreadsheet or something similar um, from the uh, website. I'm pretty sure, um, if not, I can make that happen so that would give you and, um, you know, pretty much everything we have collected uh, in one big Excel spreadsheet. Um, so that's possible. I can also give you um, just a, a, a sample of the data that we collect as well. Um, our inventory actually is a, you know, it's a living document, inventory, the inventory. So we update it on a daily basis. So when we plant a tree, 
in theory, we add the tree. When we take the tree down, in theory, we take the tree, we mark it as either a uh, removed, uh, which means that everything is gone, including the stump or a stump or um, is a tree. So it goes from being a, a live tree to being a stump to being removed, which leaves the data there. There's a symbol for the old tree uh, at that location with all the data, but it's not something that's actually active in the inventory. So we maintain the data, which is nice. Um, and then um, we can plant, you know, add new points um, as we plant new trees in that location. I'm not sure if that answered all of your questions. No, yes, that did. Thank you. Then, oh, right. I guess I was just going to ask. So when we say, like, when we've been going back to old items on our agenda every month, and one of them is tree inventory, what is the work that needs to be done then with updating the tree inventory? And I may have given a false impression maybe to the students that that there, there needed to be a lot of updating because I had just kind of pulled it up on my street and there were a whole bunch of sugar maples listed that are not there. And so I thought, okay, there's like, there's a lot of updating with years of backlog that needs to happen. So from an updating perspective, what, what would be helpful? Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so yeah, so we're human um, and we often don't have the a tablet with us or something, you know, we're doing removals and we just don't keep up with what's coming down. So there are, there's a net, I'm sure there's a number of trees out there that we have not removed from the database. Um, we try to catch them as we, you know, we go through the process of grinding the stump and everything. There's another opportunity to, you know, catch that tree that has been removed. Um, so the part that needs updating is are the trees that have been removed and we didn't, you know, log them in. Um, or any newly planted trees that we added but we didn't put in the inventory. Um, but specifically the tree data itself. So, you know, you've got this, you know, 60 year old um, sugar maple tree in front of your house, which is now, um, you know, um, 13 years older. Um, its condition could have changed. It could be, instead of being three quarters alive, it could be half dead. It could have, you know, branch failure, some kind of decay. So all these data points that we collect, the, the percent canopy and things like that, um, might change over a ten-year period. So what we want to do is revisit, catch everything we missed, and then update the health of the tree, the condition of the tree. Um, that condition is really important to, to keep track. Of. There's also, there could be some mistakes in there, and there are a few, some streets that aren't done, right? Yes, and so we were also going to um, expand the coverage of the inventory. Right now, we're, we're only at about 60%, um, so. So would it be helpful then if, for example, Catherine's group um, and Lucia's group, if they were to, on Saturday, try to make people aware of the town tree inventory, share a link to it and then prompt people and say, hey, go back to your street, take a look at the trees that are there and report back on conditions or like what information in terms of reporting back would be helpful. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's nice to know if a tree isn't there anymore. I mean, that's pretty good information. Um, it's difficult, you know, to get like um, leaf condition and decay and some of the other things that we want to collect. It does take a bit of a trained eye to do. Um, so definitely get someone to say, you know, this tree um, is no longer there or the tree is dead. They could report that. Um, they could report also that they, on their own, you know, planted a new tree in front of the yard that's in the public way. So we would want to, you know, document that as well. Um, kind of information. So it's the citizen scientist kind of way, you know, it's it's great to have a lot of eyes out there. It's great for education, um, but we can't. We have to be careful what we try to ask them to collect. Yeah. Okay, I, I think that works. So so just kind of basic comparing. You know, if there are trees on the inventory on their street that are no longer there, if there are new trees that are not there, um, and then the last question that I have is, would it then be appropriate for them to mail, to email that information to the shade tree committee, or do you prefer that they send that to, to me directly and I can kind of you know, collect everything and then report back? Yeah. It'd be nice if you had like a timeline. So, you know, can you report back in, you know, like 
five days, something like that, and have everything come in and have it all be compiled into one document, which could then okay. be, you know, sent to me or something like that. To, okay. Uh, Great. So, so Catherine and Lucia will follow up on that. Um, and yeah, if anyone else has other questions, please go ahead. Awesome. Thank you so much. Henry, you're muted. It looks like you were trying to talk. Sorry, I muted. Um, Julian, all right, you had your hand raised. Yep, sorry, I am now entered and you can see me on the screen. <laughs> okay, um, I wanted to just add um, to what Alan said that um, I think it'd be best if it went to you, Britt, and then you collated it. It doesn't have to go to the whole committee, but the general results you're finding, that'd be interesting for the committee. And the reason it's on the ongoing agenda under old items is originally there was supposed to be a training where people on the committee and other volunteers were going to get trained and that never happened and still could happen, I suppose. So, Got it. Okay. So maybe we could also then prompt people if we're looking for citizen like residents to also be trained, maybe that's something that we can share, you know, to send me their email if they are interested in being on the list to be trained as a volunteer to update this tree inventory. So that's a way for us to collect volunteers also. Yeah, does that work for you, Alan? That sounds like a good idea, yeah. Great, great. Okay, so let's move on. Um, volunteer hours. I had about 15 hours this month. Um, Britt? I wasn't here last month, and I so I didn't report. Um, so let's say probably eight hours this month and five hours last month. Okay, Sarah? Five. Okay, Bennett? Muted Bennett. Hours, yes. Well, yes, sorry. It's okay. like I've never Problem. done it. Every time it's like I'm learning it anew. Yeah, Ellen? Five. Okay, Julian? Twelve. Twelve. And um, did we have volunteer help with the last, well, the last planting was before our last meeting. We haven't had a planting since our last meeting, I think. Okay. All right, good. Um, let's move on to the agenda, the chair's report. Um, I sent out an email earlier today that uh, we got a request to join a volunteer fair in Amherst where groups that need volunteers can have a booth. And um, anyway, I'm not going to be around. It's Friday from 10 to noon. Is there anybody that would be able to be there? No? We'll do it. Okay, so yeah, it's a difficult time, but uh, what time was that? Where, what, when, where was it? It's uh, I don't have the sheet in front of me, but it's um, somewhere in town from 10 to 12, maybe the bank center. I can check. It's Friday on the common, on the common, 12. yeah, from 10 to so noon. Yeah. What date? Friday, the 12th. This Friday, 12th. this Friday. Oh, this Friday, oh, okay. short notice. Make that. And also in the middle of the day on a Friday. I know. <laughs> it's like well, people work. Yeah. So anyway, um, uh, maybe your students can skip school that day. And uh, if they were preparing for their 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 big project on okay, set, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and all their final exams. <laughs> all right. Um, other things I have. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, I sent a thank you card at Alan's suggestion to uh, the guy who spoke at the Amherst College event. Uh, it was a really fun talk, so I was happy to do that. Um, I think that's really all I have. I'm not going to be here for the planting, but uh, I'm healthy and I'm going to stay on the committee. And uh, so that's good news. So, yeah. Um, all right. Um, one other thing is if you don't make a meeting, 
please do uh, send your hours in and, uh, and let us know ahead of time if you can. So, all right, Vice Chair Report, Julian. Yeah, so I uh, have emailed the, or actually emailed back uh, Maura Keen, who runs the Emerson Cindy, and uh, told her to put our plantings on their events calendar. Um, and I also have uh, just continued to monitor that email. We've gotten a few requests, uh, one from Phyllis Leher, and uh, she will put the thing in the bulletin. She has a column in the bulletin um, where she writes for them, and she will add our committee's plantings and the time it is in there. And then I believe that is it. So more outreach and social media than anything. But. Okay. There were a couple of people who wrote in um, today or yesterday saying they would like to help this weekend. So yes, correct. hopefully we'll get some help. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I then, mentioned that I, I emailed all my neighbors since it's on Orchard and a few of them have said that they'll, that's they'll great. be there. So great. I won't be there, but hopefully they will. Yeah. Okay, um, tree warden report. Um, so we've, Thank you, Julian. Yeah, we've been um, starting to water again. That the rain has um, stopped. It's starting to warm up a little bit. Um, we water Dana and Lincoln. Sorry, Dana and Amity and uh, Blue Hills. We're also watering the cherry tree that we transplanted on the North Amherst Common. It seems to be doing okay. Um, that's the one that we bare rooted using the air spade and transplanted it about two, 200 feet down on the common into a new location. So that's nice to see that's doing well. Um, Kellogg Ave project update the, um, you know, so they finished one side of the sidewalks on Kellogg Ave and we worked with the contractor to protect the tree roots. And it was, in my opinion, very successful, um, good contractor to work with. Um, we laid down some uh, uh, heat barrier around the trunk flares where they would go into the sidewalk area so that the, the heat from the asphalt, which is about 300 some odd degrees, doesn't physically burn the you know, cambium of the trees. So um, and that will stay there and, and eventually sort of decompose. But um, I'm very pleased with the first side being done at least. And they're going to start the other side of the Kellogg, um, probably next week sometime. And then um, there's a section from North Pleasant Street to sort of the parking garage, or I think it's to the parking garage entrance on Kellogg Ave that um, a different contractor is going to be doing. And that's the section where we're going to be using, hopefully the perky paved rubberized porous surface around the trunks instead of asphalt. Um, so. That'll be interesting. And then um, we still have to do some, a lot of crown reduction and cleaning on those two trees. They're, um, they're the ones that we're exhibiting um, some decay that we need to be mindful of and uh, reduce the, the heavy branches so they don't uh, fail you know, in wind. Um, so we're working on that. Um, I said the site visit, the Tree City USA Awards Ceremony with DCR is gonna be in June in Greenfield on the 6th at 9.30. They haven't sent out the invitation yet or the location, but they just wanna give everybody a heads up that it's June 6th at 9.30 in Greenfield. So I'll follow up with more information as soon as we get it. Um, generally, we try to get somebody from the committee to go and I usually try to get somebody you know, from town hall, get the town manager or one of the town council folks to uh, attend um, so they can see, you know, what's going on um, as far as uh, trees and uh, communities in Massachusetts. So. I, I would be happy to go to that if other committee members are not interested. Cool. Um, so I'll let you know when that's going to be or where. <laughs> um, I have to repost a tree hearing as some of you, if you didn't make the tree hearing, you didn't find out that uh, apparently I didn't successfully post the uh, tree hearing on the town calendar. So it got posted in the paper, 
get posted on the tree, um, but it didn't get posted in the town calendar. And it requires two places of postings, public places um, for two weeks. So we're going to try it again uh, for the June meeting. So that would be the June 13th at five. And I will repost that. Uh, update on grants, um, just quickly. Um, the Heritage Tree Grant with the Amherst History Museum. Hopefully that work will take place late this week, early next week, get that done. Um, and I can send in all the reimbursement information for that grant. Um, the tree inventory is a different story. We are not doing well on the tree inventory and the management plan. Um, we had some issues with the data. I had an hour meeting today with our GIS department trying to figure out what's going on. I think we figured it out. Um, so we, we went from 100 tree points that had been updated to over 500 tree points that had been updated. So it, I feel much better <laughs> that we're not losing data. Um, but we still have a ways to go. Um, and I honestly don't know how I'm going to make that happen. Um, we were supposed to have a volunteer training session. Um, and the person that was going to we were going to do that with for various reasons. Um, kept having to cancel, and I had to cancel, and we couldn't make our times coordinate, and it never happened. So I got to talk to DCR about seeing if we can get an extension on that grant. They don't like doing that, so um, I'll see what we can do. Um, I may just have to um, reapply for a grant later on or something. To update it. We have this, it's a reimbursement grant, so we haven't. Other than payroll, we haven't spent any unusual funds for this. So. Is there any way we can help or it's really just has to be something you do? Yeah, if we had successfully trained everybody in how to collect the data and to look at the various um, um, points that we're trying to collect, then that would be great. But it does require you know, the, the percent live crown and things. It's not that complicated, but it does take the training of the eye, which can be done in a couple of hours, you know, with a good trainer. So um, we'll work on it. Uh, let's see. Alan, I'll just mention, um, and I don't want to speak for Catherine, but Catherine had told me she has um, GIS skills and that she might be interested in volunteering um, to help do some updating and GIS stuff around the inventory at some point. So Catherine, if you're still interested in that, we can talk and I can connect you with Alan. Yeah, she's we looking for a job this summer. A way to get you credit for it. I can get you credit for it over the summer too. So I just want to make that connection. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I'd definitely be interested in that. So anyway, and like just for volunteer hours too. Like I'm on the database right now and I also have like some questions about the way the data is because for status, some of them have numbers instead of labels. And so, yeah, I just have a lot of GIS questions. <laughs> yeah. So the um, that's the the public facing web page that you're looking at. Um, the one I could give you access to is much more detailed um, and shows you shows you all the data that we collect. Um, and it'd be easy to do. So I can send you a sample of that. Um, but if you want to hook, you know, exchange emails or something, I can we can work on that. Great. Thank you. Um, I think that's it for updates. Um, Okay, thanks. Uh, Sarah, treasurer's report. Yes. Um, so our current balance is 10,868 dollars and 29 cents. Um, Henry, that $25 deposit went through. And the deductions have all been for our tree plantings um, and the seedlings that we bought for the Arbor Day handouts. All right. um, Did you send a thank you note? Nope. Oh, was Shoshana going to do that? I thought maybe with Shoshana. I'll check in with her about that. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, social media website report. Julian? 
I will say that if you're looking at me at the website, I haven't done a thing about the website. Okay. Um... I had been thinking, I don't know if Julian's listening, but I had been thinking a little bit about the the Instagram and Julian, I know you're probably super busy. If if I can be helpful with that in like making more regular posts, um, I would be happy to. Um, or if you want to give me access to that in some way, um, I would be happy to to get that a little bit more active, you know, posting like when we're planting and um, when we're doing events and things like that, just to, and then trying to get more people to sign up for that list as well, or, you know, whatever you call it for Instagram follow, I guess. Well, it was, yeah, that'd be great for that end for Facebook. I mean, uh, Facebook, whatever. I can't do it. I don't do, yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I haven't been on Facebook in a long time. I'm not very up on yeah, how that works. So works, Instagram, but, yeah, but I'll that, be happy to do the Instagram stuff. Yeah. I think, I think we're not quite getting the word out. We did get a good response to our email about people contacting um, town hall, but um, in general, we're not getting big response to our other requests for volunteers and this and that. So yeah, that'd be great. All right, uh, keep us posted on that. And um, next on the agenda is the presentations and discussion, the Mary Maple love letter exhibit. Anything ever happened with that? Well, so I wanted to ask the opinion of the committee. So for this tree event that the, the students in the environmental education class that I teach are putting on on Saturday, um, they are, for one of the groups, they are using the leftover cookies, leftover rounds from the Merry Maple, and they'll be inviting people to, to paint on them and then making this sculpture out of them. Huh. Um, and so that that's the station, where, oh no, that's not the station where they're talking about past, present, future. That's a different station. But um, one of the kind of themes throughout the the stuff that they've put together is past, present, and future of trees in Amherst. And so if you all think it would be appropriate, I think we could display some of the letters as part of that. Um, but I am also happy to um, keep it separate and um, maybe move forward this summer when talking with the Jones Library. So I, I, I have no preference, um, but I would be interested. You know, I don't want to take the letters that we and you know that that we collected and put them into the student event if people are not comfortable with that um you know it is public um but i could also see a way of putting them on display at the jones and i would be happy to to um actually take action on that <laughs> how many letters do you currently have I counted them. I can't remember. I want to say it's like, you know, let's say there are maybe 50 that are not just actual scribbles. Yep. Children. Um, they are mostly from children. Um, some of them you can't read very well. A lot of them are just pictures. Um, but, you know, the, the general flavor of the rest of them are young children writing I am sad to see the tree go. I will miss the tree. I don't understand why it has to come down, you know, things like that. Um, there were a few, like literally a few written by adults. Um, so it is mostly kids. Um, and actually I never got my hands on the digital submissions that the, I think it was the, the bid that they were collecting those. Somebody was collecting those. Um, so I, I should reach out and find out because that would be more likely to be stories from adults. Um, so, you know, I guess in, in kind of talking about this myself, it, maybe it makes sense to pick a few of the kid ones um, and see if we could do a display at the Jones Library this summer. I think it might make sense for the um, children's section of the library. I don't know if yes. there's a place to put that. Yeah. Um, I would just want it to not just be really sad though. Like if they're- <laughs> They are know. really sad though. I know, but I'm wondering if we could pull a selection of 
really beautiful picture books about trees to yes. go with it, or um, I uh, maybe solicit some that are more like mem. We could still open it up, but solicit some that are more like happy memories or mm -hmm. family tradition. So it's not just a project. Yeah. yeah, that's an idea. And I, I, I wrote down the name of one of the librarians who had pulled all these great tree books for the Arbor Day reading. Um, and so maybe I, I think she works in the children's area, Celeste. Um, so maybe I'll chat with her about, about ideas for some type of tree related exhibit. Um, and I'll go through them again and see if there aren't, if there are some that are uplifting instead of really, really, really sad. <laughs> My neighbor said that she used to get drunk in the tree in the eighties as a teen. <laughs> see, why don't they write the, nobody wrote yeah, that. We <laughs> need like, I'd love like, I mean, it's sweet to have just children's letters. I think right. that makes it really nice, but um maybe it could include adult letters too, but yeah. yeah. And there, there are a few, I just, let me go through them and let me see if I can connect with whoever collected, if people were sharing digital memories. I mean, I have to say the most, one of the most interesting parts of the whole experience was having the wood in my shed and handing it out to people because when they came, they shared all these stories about the tree. Um, and a lot of them were older folks who, 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 you know, been around this tree or grown up around this tree, you know, for many decades. And and it's a shame that those didn't get written down. Um, but I will, I will make myself an action item list um, and connect with the folks at the library as well and see what we can come up with and report back at the next meeting. All right. I have an idea. I mean, one is you have the email addresses of people who wanted tree pieces, maybe you could write and ask them to write those stories. That's they told true. Um, but yeah. the other idea is um, to use this as sort of a, a bigger uh, exhibit. So this would be a part of an exhibit. And because of we, we do have to lose trees and we do authorize trees being cutting down, cut down, but because people are sad by that, we are planting new trees and then have some photos of our plantings mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's that's kind of what this my students have been working on is this like past present and future yeah. and this idea of witness trees but also of like you know ghost trees trees that are not not there anymore um and they've pulled some picture some some imagery i think from the historical society and other places but but yeah i think that's an interesting an interesting idea and i it, it could be cool to look into grant opportunities around um, like the, I don't remember what it stands for, but there's the Northeast Council for the Arts, I think. Um, is, is there something we could do creatively around um, these stories of, of trees? I um, think the um, Amherst Cultural Council is a perfect yeah. place okay. to apply. They usually, um, if I recall, do like 1,500 to 2,000 Okay. Um, grants, but I, I I would think if we can find a good location and sort of a good narrative yeah. of this, um, I, I, it just seems like a perfect fit to me. Yeah. They I, may also offer some grant opportunities as well, but I think the cultural council is more likely. Okay. I would agree. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea. Um, the other thing I will say is, although nobody that I know of at least does that anymore, Bennett. Um, <laughs> but uh, we could have an exhibit similarly placed to where the tree was cut down on the mm -hmm. new common, where maybe there's like a little screen or a little bench or something that has the placards inside of it, that has the things that have been written inside of it covered up by like a placard or a plate of glass or something like that um where people can see that's where the tree was right when they're on the common that's, i like i that wonder idea. if anybody's making a bench out of the tree yeah what's the bench update alan is there a bench update <laughs> there is no update on the bench yet. okay we still have the wood for the bench but we don't oh have you a, do yeah well, that would be a, perfect we're trying I to do. figure out how to do it you know um 
I do have that one guy that we met at the um, sustainability fair and he emailed me and he wanted to pick up some wood. I need to, I don't have any wood of an appropriate size for him. So let me connect you. Um, The other thing I want to mention, I mentioned this sculpture that my students are hoping to have the community collaborate on made out of the Mary Maplewood. Um, So that could be, maybe that becomes part of this, right? Like maybe there's, I don't know, maybe we, we, it can't be fixed outside, right? Because it's Norway maple wood, but maybe temporarily, you know, we have some kind of exhibit with these letters, with some of these other things that we've been talking about um, that we seek funding for as as a community event of some kind. So I'll, I'll give this some thought. I'll do some digging and report back. Great. Thank you. Yeah. I was I- just going to add, Britt, while we were on the topic, if you're going to reach out to the people who took wood, you could see if they'll send you photos of what they've made, because that's a form of a love letter to the tree also. So especially if it's it's like for private, I know some people are talking about coffee tables or bowls or whatever private thing they're doing. If they felt like sharing that, that's a form of a love letter too. If it's it's become I'm going to ask them to share their stories of maple and pictures. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, and there was one woman who came from Maine to pick up wood who was going to make something and then donate it to the committee so that we could auction it off or raffle it off or something. I never heard anything from her, but maybe I'll, I'll check back in, see what great. happens. That's great, thank you. Any other comments on this? All right, so Arbor Month event review. Sorry, I didn't get to, to unmute quick enough. Um, I'm happy to help um, Britt with thoughts and Great. writing and things like that. Um, so. I do think it, the Mary Maple could be a very big part of this, but I agree that it should also be, you know, about education, about life cycles and, and yes. the work that the committee does too. Yep. So. Great. 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 Okay. Last call. <laughs> All right, uh, Arbor Month event review. Um, I think most of them went pretty good, except the the book reading didn't go so well. But I was at the library today and saw the the young bride. <laughs> um, it's going to be a while till the two match, you know. So, but it was it was very nice that we did that. I'm very happy we did that. Anybody else have comments? I'd like to add, I want to thank everybody for helping out. Um, and both the um, library and the museum and it was college all said that they would be interested in, you know, something again next year. So um, we can hopefully, you know, do a better job promoting the, um, the book reading kind of activities that involve kids. It's just a tough group to get. It's a tough time of day. You know, yeah. um, it's difficult, but um, they may have to work with the teachers more than the library, you know, depending upon people bringing their kids to the library. So, um, cool. I also mentioned yesterday we could um, partner with the museum, and I'm sure we could help <laughs> promote it or bring some artists or authors in to do book readings. So um, that would be helpful too. Yes. Um, I'm sorry I missed the event. I was out of town, but. Did the work um, on the groom tree, the big one, um, did all the pruning and cabling and all that take place already? Not yet. It's um, hopefully going to take place either later this week. It looks like it's going to be early next week, midweek next week that the work will take place. Um, so. Okay. Because there's so many shoots and things coming off of that. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I was actually thinking if we have that. Um, guy from the uh, U.S. Forest Service come back, maybe do an evening public event in a town location rather than the college location. Mm-hmm. We might get a, a good, a different crowd at least, or more a crowd that's connected with us. So, yeah. Good. Other comments? I just wanted to add, I thought it was great that a lot of um, your crew, Alan, and um, folks who are on the grounds and facilities crew at Amherst College were were there for that talk and that they could get um, continuing ed- education credits for that. I thought that was, I thought that was great. Yeah. 
Okay. Individual tree requests. Um, that's been on there because we do get some requests, as Julian mentioned, but um, we haven't really figured out a system or a way to do it. We could plant them ourselves. We could, you know, with Alan dropping them off and dropping off a small load of chips or something like that. But what do we want to do? Do people have ideas or? So how many people would be willing to do a planting on their own at someone's house if we got a request? Yeah. All right, so most of us then, or all of us. So if um, we get a request for a tree from a homeowner, Alan, can we go ahead and say yes and uh, use our money and you'll bring the tree over or whatever? Yeah, we could work it out. Um, you know, we have to, you know, there's always conversation around species and location and getting the dig saves done and all that stuff. Um, and then getting the trees um, and then coordinating with you to, you know, what day is going to be there. So you can't leave a tree, can't, often can't leave these trees sitting overnight, you know, because they may walk away. So. Mm. I just wanted to ask, just to clarify, we're talking about, we're not talking about planting a tree anywhere on private, someone's private property. We're talking about planting it within the public way or the, uh, the setback. The yeah. setback, right? Yeah, that's okay. what we're talking about. Yeah, okay. Because I would not support using public money to buy trees and plant trees further back. So, yeah, yeah. that's agreement. So maybe we need to come up with a um, a written system, and then we'll share that around. And maybe I'll work. I'll work on something like that. And then if we agree to that, then we have a system and then we, someone requests a tree, we say, all right, here's the system, here's what the homeowner needs to do, here's what we'll do, here's what Alan will do, and uh, get that solved. Yes? Sounds good. Okay. So let me write myself a note about that. Uh, Alan, if you had to guess how many, in, in a given month during planting season, how many requests in the old days would you get for something like that? Do you even know? Well, in the old days when we were, you know, advertising tree planting and trying to get people to take trees because we had our mission was to get them planted. Um, uh, you know, we, you know, probably get, you know, a dozen, you know, requests a week maybe. Um, but right now, you know, I can go weeks without getting a request to plant a tree. So. Okay. Yeah, and there's only like two or three come in every spring to our email address. So yeah. Okay. Great. All right, good. Uh, town tree tour. Uh, we talked about doing one in the fall, and uh, Ellen, you and I still want to should get together and try to come up with something written or some sort of app or something, some way to do this. Um, do you have anything else to add, or anyone else? No. All right. Um, second Saturday planting, May 13th. Um, Alan, you want to run the, uh, explain what the system for this month? Um, yeah, so we're just going to start on um, orchard data section. Is that what you're asking me to? Yeah. Yeah. And then we're going um, to work our way uh, down North Pleasant Street. There's a couple of trees, sorry. North, um, Northampton, Northampton Road. Road towards uh, South Pleasant Street. Um, there's two trees on the, the corner there, and then we'll turn right onto South Pleasant and start planting down that street. Um, and then there's one tree on Woodside, and I may have an extra tree now, so we may put another tree on. Um, either Woodside or we could put it over where um, the trees were cut down there, Britt, um, on Hickory? Hitchcock? Or, Hitch, no. Um, Walnut. Walnut, yeah, Walnut. Um, I might have an extra swamp white oak. Um, so. All right, so um, whoever is there, we might have to keep an eye out for people who are wanting to volunteer and, uh, you know, since we're a moving target, 
but uh, it, the publicity does say we're starting an orchard and uh, and Northampton Road. So, but as it gets later, keep your eye out for people that might be straggling in. Um, and as many people as can, please do try to come, since at least two of us won't be there. So, Alan, I have a. I'm just going to convey something I'm sure you've already considered, but a, a friend wrote this to me about this, so it's very short. I'm just going to read it to you. I walk and drive along that section of Route 9 almost every day, on, and the road and sidewalk improvements on both sides of the street are still very much in progress and will be for the next year or so. And there's carryover related construction and staging on nearby streets such as Kendrick, Dana, and sometimes Blue Hills. It's a stressful environment right now for all, but the new trees are going in anywhere close to all that construction. Chaos may be waiting. So I know that I, I saw that and I registered that, and I also think that you're pretty aware of everything going on over there. Um, but felt like I needed to hmm. share that. Um, so, um, yeah, it's true that, you know, that they removed all the trees that they felt wouldn't survive. Um, and the trees that are, you know, in this on private property that are away from the road are still going to be impacted by this. Um, so we will see, you know, a number of those will probably decline in the years to come. So. Got to get new trees planted. Yep, great. And all the all the ones that have been removed on um, orchards, like the old sugar maples, they're they're you know not right on Route Nine. They're pretty far down. So yeah, the, well, the, there were actually three large sugar maples that were taken down. That was at the Route Nine end um, right. in the grass belt there. And we, we a few years ago, most, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's that's the section we're really planting this time we're not okay. doing much further down yet. got it um, okay and um, we don't have a location yet for june do we and are we going to plant or are we going to do a tree care day be nice to plant um but we'll, can, we can we'll can monitor the weather and you know, see if we're okay. in el nino already <laughs> do you have a couple ideas for either planting or tree care we had a list in one of our meeting minutes. I remember doing that of suggested yeah. places. I'd have to look at our last meeting notes to see what that was. I don't, off the top of my head, I don't have it. I can pull up the minutes I took. I don't seem to have it. Um, I think it's in my. Oh, here it is. Um, <laughs> Main Street, Route 9, Belchertown Road, College Street, um, Watson Farm. Dana and Blue Hills, we did, right? We did yep. that. And Orchard Street, we're doing. So not too bad. All, right, All those other ones are going to continue to be under construction, though, right? Belcher mm -hmm. Town Road, College, Route 9. Yeah. Where's um, Watson Farm? I don't know. It's, that was a Julian. Julian, that was one of your yeah, Watson, Watson Farm is off of Main Street in between uh in between Main Street and uh College Street Route 9, um down towards Fort River Elementary School. So it's probably private property. No, it's owned by the housing authority in Amherst, so it's oh. public property. It's public property. It's not. It's not part of the public way. There's not. There are not ten roads on them. Um, oh, okay. So but, um, not, So it's not like the town. The town owns it, but it's not a public way. Correct. Yeah, it's the housing authority. Um, okay. Yeah. So that's different than the DPW owning the town common. Correct. Okay. I see. Could so we... I mean, we, I mean, it definitely would qualify, in my opinion, for. Okay. You know, that, that would be like one of those um, TD Bank North or whatever it is, grants, you know, because that would uh, probably qualify for like an environmental justice grant. Uh, Same okay. with the boulders, you know, we talked about, you know, trying to do something with one of those. So those, that's those types of locations we could, there are grants out there we could get to purchase trees, to plant there um, and not use the funds that are dedicated towards public shade trees. Right, that makes sense. And they wouldn't be considered public shade trees because they're not on the right away. Correct. Okay, got it. Cool. Okay. Yeah. 
Cool. Well, Julian, maybe do you want to try reaching out to the housing authority and um, talking about that we'd love to do some tree planting there and we might be able to get a grant to do it? Sure. Yeah. Um, and could I ask, maybe they would provide the funds as well. I don't know. HUD, HUD provides funds for, you know, tree planting as well. So that would be, um, you know, an opportunity okay. there for more funding. I'll look into it um, and we'll call them maybe even tomorrow. Great. Right. I think that's a great idea. Okay. Um, um, the point that I wanted to raise, um, I received an email from a member of the community that I don't know, um, probably a month ago, asking if we had a policy on planting native trees um, and suggesting that we focus on, you know, when we have the opportunity on, on planting native. So I said I would share that with the committee and I had reported back that generally we try to um, you know, often we plant native trees. We certainly don't plant invasive trees, but I think the practice has been to to go with what is available and what is what we know will do well in the area. Um, but I wanted to raise that issue of um, perhaps trying to prioritize native species so as not to reproduce, you know, some Norway maple equivalent in fifty years. Yeah, I think it's it's a good issue. I think we have talked about it and. Uh... Partly it's separated, it's not in the forest where it will spread more easily, but it's also, there's just so few trees that we can plant anymore. Since we can't do beeches, we can't do sugar maples, we can't do hemlocks, we can't do um, ash, you know, et cetera. So I think we're just trying to find a diversity of trees that will grow well in the public right away. I think that that's, sure. that's, that's pretty much our policy. You could say that we could fine tune it, we could, have a discussion about that if people want. Yeah, I, I said I would bring it up. I mean, I, I, yeah. I agree, you know, at this point, I don't see the harm in planting like a ginkgo tree, for example. Um, you know, if we know that it will, it will do well. Um, but I think, yeah, obviously staying away from, from invasives uh, is, is a smart strategy. So, but we already do that. It would be, you know, could, could be worth, you know, it would be something that would be in the management plan, urban forestry management plan, which would, you know, say that, you know, there is no written policy. So you could actually write a policy that says we, our policy is to, you know, where, where possible plant native trees, um, something along that line, or we, we plan to plant, you know, 80% native species, you know, we try to reach that goal every year, um, something. Nothing's yeah, I, written down right now, so. I think it'd be good to actually have a written policy. Does anyone want to take a stab at that? I can take a stab at that. Okay. Um, as long as the, as the I, I will take, as my lead, I'll take what Alan just said, um, which I think makes sense. And because um, I, I think, we will get more, this is only, I mean, I'm interested, we're all interested in playing native trees wherever we can. And we're gonna get, and I think it's becoming a bigger um, issue. And even that that article that I put in the newsletter this month was about, um, I mean, there was the issue about native versus non-native plants in that one as well. So it's getting, it's becoming more prominent. So I think it would be good for us to, to have that. I'll work on it. I would tend to agree. Thanks for being willing to write that up. Great. Yeah, I think that'd be good to actually have a written policy that we can share. So thanks, Britt, if you're still there. Um, okay, yeah, she is, yeah. All right, um, town budget line item. I think we uh, can celebrate almost. It hasn't passed the, the town council, but I think we've really come a long way and uh, maybe we should hold off on the celebration, but it's very exciting, yeah. It is, it's pretty exciting. And thank you, everybody. Yeah. For all your hard work making it happen. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I heard from my friend John Root. He wrote a couple letters and then he got a response and he shared all of them with me. And it, was, it was very nice. So, that's great. All right. Um, town budget line item UMass interns, anything new on that? 
Um, well, it sounds like Catherine might be interested in um, helping out in some way, either as a volunteer or for credit. Um, and if we have other um, specific things that we're looking for, um, I could certainly reach out to folks in this class from this semester. Um, I know there's one student who's been doing um, tree inventory stuff for DCR, um, or I think it's DCR. Pretty sure it's DCR. Um, so yeah, if I have a better, I feel like I say this every month and then I forget, but if I have a better sense of um, specific things that students could be helpful with, um, then I can see what what folks might be up for. Well, do we want to brainstorm a list of things or should we table that till next month or? I think now like it's better than next month because they're all going to be gone. Okay. <laughs> You're talking about interns for the committee to, to help the committee do things. Is that what we're yeah discussing? or help you? Yeah. So it just I'll start. Um, if they're going to be working with the town, and I can try to try to have them do you know tree related things most of the time, but um, the reality is they'll get stuck doing a lot of different things um, if they end up doing an internship with the okay. town. Which is good. I mean, it's you know they're all good experiences, but it's not. You know, someone wanted just inventory experience, right? I could make that happen. You know, eighty percent of the time, twenty percent of the time, they could be dragging brush or right. wielding a string trimmer. <laughs> so. Right. so, in terms of the committee, what would be helpful? I mean, I heard. I know we've talked a little bit about um, an app or designing something for um, the tree tour. Right, would that be one item? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. I mean, even just tree planting when we do the second Saturday plantings. Okay. Other ideas? It could be, yes, the social media kind of stuff, making things more, somebody who's into, uh, more programming kind of things to make everything more automated, you know, less human, you know, data entry for the stuff the committee is doing. Yeah, there was a, there was, um, I have her email. There was a computer science PhD student at UMass who came and picked up Mary Maple, a Mary Maple round and was really excited about it and had gone out and bought the 1975 Trees of Amherst book and was trying to identify all of them. So she, and she had said she would be interested in volunteering. That's uh, great. She does Another program. idea is we could have them actually help us deliver or coordinate the delivery of the Mary Maple uh, wood and that type of stuff. Yeah, so I'll, maybe I'll reach out. I could reach out to her and see if she's interested. I mean, I think that would be like volunteer work for for her. Um, yeah, and Bennett, would um, if you had someone to help you with the redesign of the website? You know, I think that's most the, the I, I was thinking about that. Um, that's mostly if the programming part is mostly a function of what the town can offer and the town could help with that. The holdup on that is content, like, um, you know, like I think what what the way that would work is we would hand over, you know, Word doc or Google doc or something with all the stuff that we wanted. There was some organizing principle, and the town says, okay, well, we're going to put that into our template based on our, you know, CMS system. Um, I think that's I'm I'm making this up, but I I don't think we would hand them a programmed anything. Um, for the website, I don't think. Yeah, I was thinking more in terms of helping you. You've come up with ideas, and you haven't had time to put them into uh, fruition. You know. Yeah, that's mainly it, just writing. It Maybe I could get ChatGPT to do that. <laughs> say that again. No. A joke. Go ahead, Brett. Um, I was going to say it could be interesting to see if anyone is interested in doing some of the background research that um, Sarah and I had talked a little bit about 
on the significant tree ordinance, right? Like figuring out mm -hmm. what other significant tree ordinances look like. So that would be more of like a research position that I could give credit for. So one of the um, one of the things we've been wanting to do for a while is get like a tree canopy analysis done, like percent canopy for the town. Okay. Some of the things that would help us identify, um, you know, running the eye tree analysis on the existing data we have for the benefits of the trees we have inventoried. Um, right. Okay. Great. Um, so I'll, I'll write this up and I'll send it to the students that I've been working with in the last few years and see if anyone is interested either in volunteer work or work for credit. Um, yeah. The tree nursery item, um, I am I would love for us to do that, especially after having seen how uh, Greenfield has developed quite a nursery um, and uh, UMass has a tree nursery. So maybe we partner with them and get trees in them, but the trees we were giving out left much to be desired in terms of quality of uh, seedlings. So if we had a way to grow things, um, okay, Britt, yeah. Um, Anyway, so I don't think we have the people power to do it right now, but um, let's keep well, that have, in mind. We have the location now, so I do have hmm. the potential location on Station Road um, with water available. Um, oh, where on so, Station Road? At the farm? Yeah, at the old horse barn, mm -hmm. yeah, um, where okay. the Mary Maple Ward is right now. Um, yep. So we could fence off an area there, and we have access to water. Um, that's great. That's a great use of that. I was wondering what was going to happen with that because it's a pretty large piece of property. Yeah. And so we, we could get something started there. And if for some reason we get kicked out of there, then we just dig up the trees and plant them. So it's not, um... Well, should we maybe think about uh, one of our planting days? We set up the nursery. We need to figure out species that we want to grow. We need to think how we're going to grow. We're going to do grow bags. You know, um, there's a number of things that have to be discussed. But, you know, definitely species is what are we going to grow? Okay, so let's um, let's think about what species we might want to grow and uh, come up with a list for next month and start moving ahead with this. Yeah, okay. I'd love that. I drive or ride my bike by there twice a day at least, <laughs> so I can keep an eye on things. Great. I did, um, we did grow um, Turkish hazel trees and um, uh, somebody that I knew who was interested in them asked me for a list and I talked to Alan and I, we, there are some still alive and uh, it's quite exciting. Um, so not a lot of them survived and some of them didn't get dug up in time, but, uh, and at least one I planted on my property because we had no, no place to plant it and needed to come out of the ground. So. Um, Timing is really key. That's what I've learned on nursery. You want them in the in the grow bags for a certain amount of time, but not too long and not too short. So, yeah. All right, uh, good. Um, we talked about the tree inventory, um, the history museum. We've pretty much talked about the library trees. Um, anything new on that, Sarah? Is you there were, an update with... on the library tree? Yes, there is. So, there is an event this Saturday, the 13th, um, to have people come and explore. Um, it's called Pope's Garden. Um, the, oh, well, okay. So the Kinsey Memorial Garden at the Jones Library is pretty much going to be removed for the expansion. I don't know how much is going to be able to be maintained, but a lot of it is going away. Um, and there's a proposal to transplant some of the plants to the new Kestrel Land Trust location. Mm -hmm. So that's been approved and the Amherst Garden Club is going to support that transplanting effort. Um, so some of them are gonna be removed to the Kestrel Land Trust location and Carol Pope, who was one of the designers of the garden is going to open her personal garden in Amherst 
for a tour this Saturday, May 13th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, it's on High Street in Amherst. And the idea is to have it be a fundraising event to support moving some of the selected plantings from the Kinsey Garden to the Kestrel, their new location at the Kestrel Land Trust headquarters. But all those big trees will come down. I don't know if it's all or not. My understanding from what I, I saw, and I, I don't, don't know if it's the final plan, but there is the, the one big oak tree kind of closest to the building, and that little bump out parking spot in back um, that would have to go. And there's a couple of trees that kind of run around the side of the building that would probably end up going as well. I thought the last plan I saw had two trees being destroyed for that, uh, but I could be wrong. It, it, changes often. <laughs> There's some uh, design work still being done out front, so there was some tree impact out front, but it depended upon how they end up doing the walkway. If you know they do it one way, you lose trees. If you do it a different way, you don't lose trees. Um, so it depends. All right. Anything else on this? State level initiatives. Um, I haven't done anything lately, um, but seeing you know the talking about the tree on College Street yesterday is like, yeah, really, this is something that we should be working on if you know, we have the energy to do that. So yeah, yeah, I, I think it's worth thinking about how to engage in the complete streets discussion, right? Because if this is happening here, this is happening everywhere they're putting in complete yeah. streets, right? And so, you know, I don't I don't know if other tree committees across the state are, are having similar experiences. They're also, you know, getting frustrated by the all these removals um, for complete streets, you know, if it's worth connecting with them in some way, but, but I, I think it would be productive to try to engage at the state level with, especially with this complete streets, um, push. All right. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll reach out again to Mindy and Joe Cumberford. Um, we, we did before when Julie and I spoke at the tree wardens dinner some months ago, um, you know, there were people from other tree committees there and uh, we spoke about the, the four basic things, the update to chapter 87, the complete streets. Um, I can't remember what the others were, but yeah. Um, and there is a grad student, I think it's a grad student at UMass working, I think on the Mass DOT complete streets um, project. Is this the Stockbridge student that you had mentioned? I think so. I'm not sure. I heard several, several projects all at once and I'm, I'm confusing them. So I can't, I'm not sure. Somebody there is working to help MassDOT assess the, um, the community uh, temperature on complete streets as far as trees go. So they've, they turns out they did do the, the survey um, and their, this student is compiling the survey. Um, I'm not sure what they're gonna do with it yet, but uh, might be worth reaching out to somebody. Over. I can try to find out who it is. Yeah. yeah, and what happens when the survey results come back and turns out no one cares about <laughs> Well, people do, and uh, yeah. So, yeah, it was hard to. I think you know, if we got all the tree committees in the state to start clamoring for something, maybe it would happen. But uh, maybe it's just we just keep encouraging our our local people. To, but Mindy and Joe are very supportive of us, and they know the issues at least. So. All right, significant tree ordinance. Anything on that, Sarah? Nope. Nope, no update from me. Okay, and the SOLA bylaw group, I did see their meeting again soon. Julian? 
Uh, I actually went last time, but did not catch when they're meeting again. I will check the website about that right now. Yeah, I got some email. I didn't look at it today, but uh, I'll, I'll, if I find it, I'll forward it to you. Okay, that is great. I am checking now. Okay. Um, not about the specific solar bylaw group, but there is a company, Trinity Solar, who's been canvassing my neighborhood, and I've seen their signs up around, and uh, so offering people to do solar, and I don't know, it's a whole thing, he's got a whole spiel, right, but he said he they would include cutting down trees for free, so um <clears throat> Just there are there are other companies who are, are including tree removal as part of their solar package to try to get people to sign up for solar panels. Um, so that it's there's definitely a need before too many people start chopping down trees, um, trying to get private solar. Yeah, well, it might be time to remind people of the fact that they don't own the trees in front of their house, you know. So. Good business model, you know, got to do solar. So then you start a little side tree company, you know, to yeah. do tree rules. Yeah. yeah. All right, anything else? Um, Real quick on that point. Um, um, I don't think that I have the knowledge or, um, probably Tom to write anything in depth about that in the newsletter, but if any, I, I, I've, I've heard about the issues of, you know, community solar and cutting down large swamp, but I haven't, I actually haven't thought about the issue of uh, private, like just putting solar on your house and having it bundled with the tree removal, which I assume is widespread now that you mention it. Um, if anyone comes across some sort of media, and I'll look myself, but if there's any sort of media article about that or, I don't know, it's really interesting and um, not great. <laughs> and it's something we should be talking about more. Not that our newsletter with its 200 subscribers is going to move the needle necessarily, but it's not nothing either. So um, anyway, that's something I'd like to share. So if you see that, please send it to me as, little, as well as any tree related articles, always. We had, I'll just say we had solar put on our house Two or, two or three years ago after we moved in. And, you know, basically they give you a shade analysis um, and they'll present you with options. Like they're, they're looking at the canopy around your home and they'll say, well, if you, you know, without these trees that will increase your, you know, uh, your capacity um, X amount, right? So, you know, I, ha I hadn't heard previously, you know, until just now about this option of, they will literally cut the trees down for you. Yeah. But, you know, I even had a neighbor approach me and say, you know, we want to get solar, but it's so shady. We'd have to cut down this big pine and these other trees. Like, what, what do you think? It, what's the trade-off here? Which is more important? And I said, leave the trees. The trees are more important, um, you know, for, for a variety of reasons in this case, because they're, they're big old trees. Um, but I think it is, it is something that people don't, really think about um, in terms of the the lost value of these trees when when they're they think they're making the green choice you know putting in solar or at least the economical choice so yeah and I just checked the solar bylaw working group meeting is this Friday from 11 30 to 1 30 um, and I can make that this week so that will work Great. Great. There's, um, the idea was floated that um, it might be that might have come from the bylaw group, solar bylaw group, that um, if someone is putting solar on their house and they cut down trees on their property, this is kind of like the uh, significant tree ordinance, you know, then they have to pay into a fund to plant more trees around town somewhere else or something. So. Yeah, no, I think that would be a very good idea. And then soon enough, it will become part of these people's business model to include covering that cost as well. How would you, what would the legal 
So you're suggesting like a policy mechanism that would require it's permitting the mechanism. So yes. if you yeah. permit a solar panel. Right. That's interesting. Yeah, maybe we should look into that too. I think that's an interesting point. All right. Uh, Catherine and Lucia, do you want to add anything? Um, no, I don't think so. All right. Well, thank you for joining us and uh, thank you everyone for all your work. Any last comments before we go? Um, I would just like to point in today's Gazette, there's an article about a, a, a bill, a, a proposed bill uh, about uh, expanding tree canopy in Massachusetts. I meant to bring it up. I can't remember even the headline of it, but I've never heard of it. I'm sure maybe Alan, you've probably heard of this, mm -hmm. but um, it was news to me. So, um, is a, the state is, um, thanks to the federal government, um, getting a lot of money in their urban forestry part of their program to help promote tree canopy, especially in environmental justice communities. Yeah. Um, and we do have some neighborhoods in town that qual would qualify for environmental justice neighborhoods. So we might be able to get a small piece of that. Oh, I have something to add, a uh, separate note. I was speaking with Mindy Dom, and she said that they get earmark money from the state, every uh, state rep and senator. And she said that if we didn't get the 40,000 from the town to let her know what was missing and she would try to make up the difference with earmark money. So there is some other money available. So, yeah. Anyway, we need to pursue all these things at once, right? Uh, Lucia writes, uh, thank you so much for your time and work for Amherst. And yeah, great, thank you. All right, I think we can call this meeting adjourned. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Great. See you yeah. Saturday. Thanks. Have a nice day. Bye-bye. Good luck Saturday, and I'll, I'll be in touch thank when you. I'm back. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night.